Hi everybody. Once again, I'm Carla Christopher and I am super excited to welcome you to another episode of Culture in Maine. If you are not already following us on Facebook, on Twitter, make sure you do so at Culture in Maine at either one of those outlets or find us online at wrct.tv. Just go to channel 18 and show profiles. There we are. You can catch up on all our back episodes. But this week, we have brand new stuff coming at you, and it is pretty cool. We have Aaron James, who is actually the York City reporter for the York Dispatch, a great local paper. But she's doing a fabulous series called I Art York, which is doing profiles, much like what we do here, of different artists that are performing, living, working, and loving in the York area. So you can see wonderful videos and get real behind the scenes stories for these artists. So if you love what we do on Culture in Maine, you will absolutely adore what Erin is doing with I Art York. So we've got Erin herself here, but we also have some of the work that she's done and the reporting and videos she's taken. I think you'll really like them. We also have an incredible band. This was a totally unexpected score. They're called Jatan. And this ensemble of brothers and friends is going to be at the Strand Capitol on August 2nd. Trust me, you really need to check them out. They're incredible. It's a lot of fun. It's York. It's what we do here. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the episode. Culture and me. It is a place where the truth should be kept. The arts and music scene really shows what people are about. Share what's going on here in York. It makes you feel like a family. Local art has a face that most people can relate to. Our community up here that sticks together. Art is art. Great potential with great artists, poets, singers, writers, directors, filmmakers. It's fantastic. Everyone has a story to tell. That moment, you have to capture that moment and share it with the rest of the world. Showing something that maybe is not been seen before. Without art, what good is life? I am art. I've been art ever since I was born. It really adds a great deal to our community. We don't really need art to exist, but you need art to live. Culture in Maine is important, and I think playing out is important, and playing open mics and playing wherever you can play. It's all about us all checking in with each other. My name is Ken Broderman. I'm a photographer. I uh, work and live actually downtown in York City, which I absolutely love. Uh, there's a lot of amazing uh, places and a lot of things to see downtown that are uh, just beautiful. Uh, I feel sometimes like a lot of the beauty of the city is actually missed. I work for myself. My business is just simply Ken Broderman Photography. Uh, I started the business about three years ago. And uh, fortunately for me, people seem to like the work that I do, and so I continue to do it and uh, continue to grow as a business. And I'm hoping that that uh, continues on into the future. Uh, most of the work that I do is portrait work. Uh, I don't do a ton of weddings. I'm open to them and I have done them. I usually only book one a year, but uh, most of the work that I do is portraiture. So families and children, senior portraits. I do different events. Uh, I teach workshops, which I really love. I actually wanted to be a uh, high school art teacher at one time. And uh, the way that I'm actually fulfilling that dream, in a sense, right now, is by taking what I love in photography and teaching it to other people. Uh, a lot of people are, are concerned, oh, you're giving away your secrets or you're doing this or that. And there really are no secrets in photography. Everybody's got a vision. Everybody's got a different point of view and a different perspective. And everybody can take the same picture at the exact same time and all of those photos are going to look completely different because it really depends on the person taking it and what they see. So the photography workshops allow me to be able to share that knowledge and to be able to help people to get better at what they love to do while still developing and building their own vision. Welcome to a very special episode of Culture in Maine. The reason why it's special is because we are highlighting somebody else's reporting. How does that make sense? Because one, this is York County and that's what we do, we work together. But two, there's no way that I could not be super hyped about Aaron James. 
Now, Erin James is a reporter for the York Dispatch, and she joined us today to help narrate this episode. But what she's doing is the most explosive arts coverage that any print medium has done nice. for the arts community of York, I would say in years, but I'm pretty much sure that the answer would be never. The series is called I Art York. And what Aaron's doing is tracking down the independent, the unsigned, the underground, as well as the accomplished and established. She's getting these artists from all different genres to come together, tell their stories, and doing profiles of them both online and in print, which means you can go back, track out the whole catalog, and get to meet personally and in depth all these different artists from the York area. It's pretty amazing stuff, and you're going to get to see some clips of some of those interviews and videos and meet plenty of those artists who you haven't had a chance to see on Culture and Main yet, or some that you're going to be experiencing in a totally different way. But to find out exactly how the I Art York series came to be, nobody better to explain that than Erin James herself. Hi, Kyle. Welcome to Culture and Main. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, you know, you work for the Dispatch, and your yes. general... You're not just the arts reporter. Your general no. is that you cover like the entire city. Right. My beat is covering the city. That is that oh, that is it in a nutshell. That so, sounds so Dick Tracy. I love when you're like, that's my beat. <laughs> that's my beat. I know. I, I love, love that. that. I love that. Being a beat reporter. Yeah, so I, I cover the city. Um, my the, the the most basic part of my job is covering the government. Um, that's why right. I go to city council meetings and I go to school board meetings and I try to go to as many press conferences and um, you know, d d just keep up with what's going on um, in city government. But I like to expand that out whenever I can um, to, yeah. to not only look at what the government's doing, but what the, the people that are, that are being governed, what they are also right. doing. And I, I, I consider, your, yes, I consider that a very important part of being a beat reporter. If you have a certain geographic area, you should know as much as you can about what's going on in, in, in that area. So, and I think we all know that um, the, the art scene here is, um, it's been around, but there's, there's some really cool momentum here. Um, and so I, I, I saw that, I thought, what can I do with this? And I Art York was the, the idea to address that. So what exactly are you doing with I Art York? Tell us what this series sure. is and what um, it's about. I, what I'm trying to do is uh, once a week-ish, <laughs> when I can right. get that done, um, I am trying to uh, profile an artist um, or, or a duo, like I just talked to a couple that performs together, right. um, I profile them, tell the, um, the audience who they are, what they do, but, but give some context as to what their backstory is, because I don't know any artists who their life experience didn't determine what, right. what their, their art is, their medium, that their style, whatever. So I, I actually have found that in the few that I've done so far, I don't talk a whole lot about the art. I talk about the artist. So, and that I, th so I think cool. that's where the, 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 uh, the value of it is there. So in, the goal is to let people know who's out there. Um, like you said in your introduction, I, I do want to try to find those underground people, those people who fly under the radar, who um, maybe are a little bit more shy, but are just as talented. Um, so I'm trying to do that. I think I've, I've gotten a few out there so far that, that kind of fit yeah. that mold. Um, and, but also, I mean, I'm very interested in anybody who, who is, who's local or performs local and, um, is, a, an artist in any way. I try, I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it right. the same way that I think art space looks at it. Like if you consider yourself an artist, then I consider you an artist. Um, hmm. so right now it's, it, I've done mostly, you know, kind of the, the, um, uh, the artist, uh, visual artists, and, and musicians, and poets, and things like that. But you know, I'd, I'd love to do some right. some weirder things at some point. <laughs> right. So weird the, people. Let me know when the, you're out there. The performance, movement, and yes. dance people, yes. and the. But I know there's yeah. a lot of um, particularly in the York art scene. We have a lot of emphasis on the artists and the craftsmen. Mm -hmm. You know, the people that do work with reclaimed materials, yes. or people that do you know beautiful woodworking, or. You know, I, I had a, a musician on, and it turns out his real art, his real passion, mm -hmm. is that he's a wood carver mm -hmm. and does amazing artistic things with creating functional items out of mm -hmm. wood. And I thought, you know, I never would have thought that. Or mm -hmm. a leather worker who tools and, mm -hmm. and creates pictures made out of leather. I mean, yeah. he would not traditionally be considered an artist, yeah. but... Yeah, but def yeah, and definitely in York. I mean, that, that's been... 
that's part of the branding, you know, or the the, the, sure. the powers that be have, have, have said, you know, that this is this is going to be our, our our creative niche. But you know, there's there's a lot of truth in that, that um, York's history is is that industrial we are makers, um, and a lot of that is, is still around um, in, in the creative community. That is so true. That is so true. So what do you think the, the benefit is long term for doing these, these profiles? What do you see this doing for our city or, or for these yeah. artists? I think, um, when, to be completely honest, when I first wanted to do it, I thought this would be kind of a community service that a newspaper can do. Um, without violating all of our our need to be, you know, not the news to to not influence the news um, to to be the observers and the reporters, but but I do think that um, community service when it works is a good thing for a newspaper to do. So I thought, okay, there's so many people out there. I've met so many of them over the last few years, and they're not the people that get their name in the newspaper That's all the true. time. Um, so at first I thought well, this would be a great way to um, help some people a little bit, um, to give them a little bit of exposure, uh, lend a little bit of credibility, give them something they can share on their Facebook page and say, hey, look, I got this little write-up in the newspaper. Um, but you know, I extending from that, it's also um, it's, it's for readers. I mean, everything that I do is for, for people that, that are interested in their community and um, want to learn about it. So I, I hope that the... Um, the, the writing itself is interesting, entertaining, um, informative, and um, as it continues to grow, that maybe it inspires some some other ideas. Like, wow, we've got a lot of, we were just talking about comedians. Wow, we've got like some right. comedians here. We didn't Who know knew? that they were here. Maybe somebody can take that somewhere. And here you, you have the, um, you, you know, just based on IR York, you have three or four comedians. I'm not there yet, but eventually I'd like right. to be where, you know, somebody who's interested in looking for a comedian or a wood maker or um, a singer songwriter, you know, the guy right. with the guitar can, can look on the website and say, oh, well, here's three or four of them. Them and I need to get in contact with them. Amazing. That's awesome. So what about you? Like, how did you end up reporting here in York County? Like, what is the Aaron James reporter okay. story? Okay. All right. Try to get 30 years. Because you started, right, you started off out in Hanover way. Yes. I'm from Hanover. Um, uh, grew up, graduated from Southwest. And, um, Southwest? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so. <laughs> um, and when um, when I was a teenager, I, I I my creative outlet was writing. You know, I was you know the kid like. You did know, you like, start off creative writing, or did you? Start yes, off I, I always enjoyed writing. Um, you know, I would do the the poetic melodramas from middle school and high school life. Yes. I'm not a good poet, but you know, but I think that's that's how um, kids learn what they're good at and what they enjoy. You just you know, if if you're a writer, you just start writing, um, and I found that I liked that. But I also um, am very um, interested in current events. I always had a, a, an interest in history, so journalism was kind of just a natural um, uh, avenue for that. Um, so when I was in high school, I did start working at the Evening Sun, the Hanover paper, as a oh. kind of like a correspondent. They took me under their wing and uh, mm -hmm. you know let let me go to uh, Heidelberg Township meetings and Ooh. you know talk about the, the the new trash collector things like that. But um, it gave me some experience. So by the time I got to college, I had a little bit um, to build on because I'm a, I, I'm shy by nature. I'm not the you know, I, I have to, no. I've always had to work at being somebody no. who can go up and ask questions and, and put myself out there. Um, and that boost in high school really, I don't know that I would have been able to do it without that. So I also have like a soft spot for like mentorship kind of programs and things like that. So anyway, um, after I, I went to Penn State, worked for the paper there, um, and then came back to Hanover and worked at the Evening Sun for a couple more years. And while I was in Hanover, I met Chris, who's my fiance, and he is a singer-songwriter, and Just um, a good one, a really, really good one. And so and I, a culture in Maine guest. Yes, he was, he's been here before. Um, and he, I mean, I, I fell in love with him for a lot of reasons, but one of the big reasons was just like how amazing he was when you put a guitar in his hand. And he um, is also someone who is very shy. He is. When not performing. Yes, he was scared to death to come on here, but <laughs> he did very well. But you know, I'm, which I'm seeing more and more yeah. of that. And people don't realize, you know, when people ask me as, as a, por a poet and a performer, mm -hmm. they're like, you just seem so comfortable. Yeah. And I'm like, there really is no substitute for just doing and mm -hmm. doing and doing something. Yeah. But 
the whole reason I started doing this was, mm -hmm. you know, being totally shy and moving around mm -hmm. so much that I didn't know how to even get to know people, yeah. but I yeah. had to figure something yeah. out. Yeah, and you just have to do it. It's a surprisingly common story. Like people yeah. that perform, it's because it's easier to slip into an yes. alter ego than it is yes. to be yourself because you are mm -hmm. naturally shy already. We're getting married in a couple of weeks and he is terrified of standing up there for a couple of minutes and like oh. just having a little ceremony. But if you put him on stage, he'll right. play for two hours. Exactly. I don't get that, but, <laughs> but I'm just, I keep telling him, we're just gonna keep oh. it short and sweet. So anyway, so after um, after we met, we we both were like really looking to just you know go somewhere. We just we wanted to go do something, um, be somewhere else for a while. Um, we call it our adventure. So that's what we did. We took mm -hmm. off and we moved to Virginia, um, where I got a job at the Virginian Pilot, which is a newspaper down there. But the catch was that the job was in North Carolina on the Outer Banks, uh, which was awesome. Yeah, it's um, beautiful awesome. territory. Yeah. So. Um, but so I moved down to North Carolina. He followed me a few months after that, and we lived there for a while. Um, but the cost of living there is tough, and a reporter's salary yeah. especially tough. And because it's a tourist um, area, there's not a whole lot of full-time full work. So Chris was having right. a hard time. So we loved it, but we struggled. And um, you know, eventually we're like, okay, we gotta we gotta find right. ourselves some stability. This is also like at the same time that the you know economy just went like this. So, exactly. you know, we're like, okay, we need to, we need to, you know, get ourselves on solid ground here. So, um, uh, the same people who the same two editors who were at the Evening Sun when I was a teenager are now the editors of the Dispatch. Oh, cool. And I um I, I don't remember exactly how I heard, but somehow I heard that there was a job opening at the dispatch for the city reporter, and I thought, oh, that sounds amazing. Perfect. Um, and um applied and they were like, Welcome back, and here I am. So, uh, yeah, York, yeah, we scored. Yeah, so I like to think so. Yeah, so I mean, this is home. I mean, I didn't grow up in, in York City. I grew up in Hanover, which is, you know, really just a right. stone's throw. But this, this is my, I, I consider this my hometown. Um, and it's, it, I'm Gosh. able to report on my home community at a different newspaper from a different perspective. Um, but still, it's, it's you That's know, cool. there's that, that local, you know, this is, this is my, this is my place kind of thing. So, and... I just, I don't know, we got back and we found that there were, there was actually a music scene here. We did not expect yes. that. Um, <laughs> Nobody we did not. They we, don't see us coming with stuff. We, we did not expect that. We, you know, that was one of the things where we thought, okay, we're going to move back to York and where's he going to play? Who's he going to meet? And we showed up at First Cap on a Wednesday night with Shane Spiel's open mic and we were like, Blown what away. is this? And we just, we suddenly, we were just like in love. We met with, um, we, we met so many people. Um, uh, we just, you know, we just kept going, finding new places to go um, and meet people. And, uh, you know, a couple of years later, I went, I know all of these artists. What am I going to do with this? Because every time I meet someone and I go, wow, you're really yeah. interesting. As a reporter, I'm thinking story, story, story. But there's not always like news. There has, you know, and at a local paper covering um, a beat, you have you know, everything I do. There has to be some element of news. Right. I, I don't have the time usually to like, do anything other than the, uh, the day's news. And um, I just came up with this idea to let's have a, you know a feature on the website where I try to you know profile one person or, or one group at a time. Um, the photography staff was on board with it, and have, they've had a lot of fun with it. And so far, we've been able to do it. So nice. So I'm, what I'm happy were about it. what were some of the cool new things that you have uncovered or discovered with different artists that you've been profiling? I have discovered. This was something, and, and maybe I, I bring this to some of the interviews, but one thing that I've noticed in York, um, again, kind of looking at it from um, you know, a reporter's perspective, what's the story here? Um, when you look at the artist community, I see a lot of what I call self-segregation. You've got this genre over here and this genre over here, and it has a lot to do with race and culture and, and the roots of all of that. And there, there is some mingling, but not as much as you would think in a small town with as much talent and, and um, creativity as there is. And I found that people um, that I've interviewed have also kind of brought that up. Um, there, there is a real desire to collaborate here, um, yes. but people have to work at it. And that's that's been something that uh, several of the mm -hmm. the musicians that I've talked to have said. You know, 
I, I wanted to find a place to perform. I realized that I needed to, you know, have, you know, friends that, that, that maybe, you know, um, I talked to Randy Williams, who goes by Sea Smoke. He said, yeah. he's a rapper. And it's not easy to just get a, you know, a gig playing to, you know, a, a track recording. He found he needed bands. He, need, he needed at least somebody, uh, you know, on stage with him who could provide a beat and maybe some melody as well. And he has, you know, gotten himself a name in York because he has put <laughs> himself out there. Yeah, he's put himself out there. And he said, you know, I want to perform with people. Um, I want to find collaborators. And now he, now he's somebody everybody knows. So I think that there, you know, I, I would like to see more of that. Amazing. I'm not supposed to say that, though. <laughs> but I would like to see more of that. I, I think yeah. that there, there's um, uh, progress in, in the arts community will be through collaboration through, okay, you do this and I do that. How can we do that together? And, and bridging some of those very deep seated um, reasons why people don't put themselves out there, who don't walk into that bar or you know, that yeah. venue. Um, there, there's a lot of, um, there's, there, there aren't many good reasons for it now. There were good reasons at some, t at some time that people were we're nervous to do those kinds of things. Right. But now it's just, I think people just need to be a little bit more outgoing and say, you know, I want to find, I want to make some friends. I, w I want to um, find another way to reach an audience. I call my business the Libra's Den, and I started about about a year ago. Um, my dad picked it up years ago, and he taught me. It was kind of handed down to me, and then I got to meet some of his glassblower friends and mix all of our styles together, kind of. Um, I make pendants. That's what I'm best at. Uh, I like to do dot implosions. Dot implosions are just painting your simple colors with, uh, and then imploding it all, and it turns out real fancy. I don't know. It's really hard to explain. <laughs> really, I've seen all ages buy my things. Um, I've gone to so many events. I've gone to Newgrounds, First 254, um, the Sherry Ann Bloom. I have... I have flowers, I have swirls, I have um, octopuses, I make eyeballs, I can make rings and beads. I've thought about going to a few shops like um, One Step Above and just like any like consignment store, trying to get into downtown more um, to do consignment and set my things up there. Really anywhere to get my name out would be great. Put a red lip on anyone yet? Did you use Lady Danger? I've always had a love for fashion, anything. I have been into hair and makeup, fashion design. With my background in fashion design, I was able to use my pre-existing fine arts background to paint fashion croquis and uh, render my drawings, which basically that's now what I do. I paint faces. Hi, my name's Maggie King. I uh, own a business called Maggie King Makeup Artistry. I am an on-site freelance makeup artist. I have specifically worked one-on-one -on -one with brides from their first dress fittings to their final fittings, and then I'm invited to their wedding, and then I show up as a makeup artist too. I've been able to do day of and the entire, entire run of the most special day of their life. Some brides buy their dress a year and a half in advance. So I get to, uh, to build a friendship with them. I meet their attendants, their mothers, the bridesmaids, and I get to see them all the time. So I learn their personality and then I can take that into doing my makeup. And I'm fun, like when I show up that day, whether it's just me or my team, these girls are already open and we've already built a friendship that it's not just, 
hi, I'm here to do your makeup, sit down in your chair and you're next, you're next, you're next. I know the girls' names, I can talk to them, we can laugh and joke. They're, they're comfortable being able to put their dresses on around me, they don't have to leave the room. It, it's just, I'm a girl's girl. I say a natural, like everyday makeup for women, less is more. You know, you don't want to walk out with a huge face and, and scare your boyfriend or, or different men that don't understand it, let alone you need to enhance your natural beauty. Every woman who looks in the mirror, it's an instant, oh my gosh, is this me? How do I do this? Could I have you every single day? You know, they're like, oh, I just want to be a Kardashian and have you paint my face. judge who am I to deny love who am I to try and pick your world apart but I refuse to be deceived by imposters and the thieves that attempt to gain an entrance in my heart no they won't take Their words won't leave me bound No, I won't be moved My roots are firmly sound Soon they'll find out Who am I?
Hi, I'm Carter Fox. I'm from Lansdale, Pennsylvania, and I play bass in Jatan. Hi, I'm Jamie, and I am from Williamstown, New Jersey, and I play acoustic guitar, and I sing in Jatan. Hi, I am Simone. I'm from Williamstown, New Jersey, and I sing in Jatan. Hello, my name is Devin Taylor. I am a drummer and percussionist, and I play drums in Jatan. Hi, my name is Jake. <laughs> uh, I sing, I do a little bit of tambourine, a little bit of egg shaker, and jaton. I'm Steven Hansberger. I play acoustic guitar. In the acoustic version of jaton, I also play piano and backup vocal Whistle. from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Okay, well, um, our story is rather long because the band actually started out as the three of us. This is my brother, Jake is my brother. And yes. you know, if you notice, we both said we're from Williamstown, me and Simone, because we grew up together. So we've been friends and family for a really, really long time. And um, we actually started singing together in like a five-part harmony, acapella, kind of R&B, soul group. That's how we started, because our father's a musician, and he played a lot of oldies bands and stuff like that. So he really got us started learning harmonies and and learning a lot of the old school music, as you can hear, like some of that comes out in our songs because of the harmonies and stuff like that. So we started doing that first. And then, you know, through the years of performing and being on the road, it's been a long journey. Two of the other guys kind of left the group and we had to evolve our sound and, and figure out how we wanted to continue. And we started writing new music and it started coming out more instrumentally with guitars and, and just a different vibe, a different sound. So we started bringing in guys that we knew that were good players that we've been we've played with in the past, maybe had them on songs in certain sessions, and we started to form this band to bring our new sound to life. And that's how we got Steve and Devin and Carter, and we have some other guys in our band too when we play you know, the full electric thing. But that's how the band got together, basically. Having the R&B five-part harmony, I think the music has now preceded itself as taking the stuff that we've learned along the road in terms of how to write songs and trying to, I would say, de genreize what we do. We're Jeton. It is not up to us to let you know what kind of music you hear. It is the listener's choice to feel what the song means to them. Ooh. And that's, that's what we're trying to... That's the, trying, the kind of music we want to play is music that's good and it speaks to the masses. Okay. Um, you can find us, of course, through any social media outlet. We're very serious about our social media, of course. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Vine, uh, Reverb Nation. We do whatever. have our own website. We too. do have our own website, which is jatan.com, J-U-T-A-U-N.com. And um, all the updates are on there. And then on YouTube, um, our video is on the Vivo channel, um, our Vivo channel, but our webisodes are on our actual YouTube channel. So just, you know, type our name in, J-U-T-A-U-N, into YouTube, and you can find us and subscribe because we're always putting stuff out there. We're always, you know, coming up with cool content to put out there. And we have a single called By the River, which is um, on iTunes. It's anywhere you can buy music. It's available now. And we shot a really cool music video for that, so check it out. We also have another music video for Take Me Home, one of the songs we did today, too. Um, we're... That song is uh, really personal to us because it features uh, Simone's cousin, who is a really close friend of ours, who's an oh, Iraq war veteran. And, um, you know, he went through a uh, struggle over there and lost his legs out there. And so the video kind of features him and, and puts him in the, you know, the, the main focus of the video. We're really hardly even in it, mm -hmm. but it's mainly about him. So it's, it's a cool story. Everybody go check that out. And our uh, our good friend T. Shaw's on in oh, the yeah, video also. Oh yeah, T's in that too. That's right. Home to the valley where I heard there lives a tree. Example, then I learned my destiny. It was gone. Yeah, it was gone. Whoa, whoa, mm -hmm. whoa, whoa. So I walked through the mountains and across the open field. Where I heard there was a fountain, all the people go get here. My way to the old 
we have like a set writing process um sometimes i'll just be playing on the piano i'll come up with something i'll show it to them hey you guys like it no okay back to the drawing board (laughs) and then uh come up with something else you like this yeah so then we'll work on it come together collectively other times jamie will just be playing on the you know guitar the piano i'm like oh i like that i'll start singing or simone will start singing or, or other times one time this really happened uh one of us me was messing up on something and this it just happened like we we just got this feel of a song by the river actually our uh single by the river came about um from me messing up on we were, we were doing a song uh temptation song losing you and right. i was having a hard time getting this harmony and then uh jamie started going yeah, just like just, as a repetitive yeah, just thing. Just to we get just to get it. it. And then Jake was like, This can be a song, guys, and then we ended up, you know, writing something. That's, you know. There's actually a really cool behind the scenes video of that on our YouTube channel. So anybody who's watching this, go and you know, f- subscribe to our YouTube channel, check out all the, the webisodes we got. They give the history of By the River, how it shows the exact moment that what he's talking yeah, about. We actually we, have we that actually on camera. Because yeah. we, we have cameras rolling all the time, so we actually have that documented when that song came to life. So, There's so much copycats 
in the world in terms of business, in terms of music, in terms of, you know, fast food joints. Everyone sells the same hamburger. How do you name a band? You know, yeah. exactly. Every, How do you name yeah. a band? You every, know, everyone has like, oh, we have to come up with this like crazy name. Right, right, right. And yeah. again, when we started out, we were an R&B group. So we were even in that mindset. We were like, we don't want the typical R&B name. Like there was five of us. We didn't want to be like, you know, no offense to any other groups, but like, you know, five boys or you know what I mean one of those stupid names you know what I'm saying like one of those stupid names so so we said let's make something up that kind of means something to us not telling anybody about it but it's something when you see it and you hear it, it's like what is that you look it up on Google huh, it's the only thing that comes up so that was kind of our thing which was like uh, accidental genius right because yeah. yeah. <laughs> you Google us and you see nothing but us so. yeah right Sometimes what you want isn't what you need now So don't you hide yourself and you don't want to see now I know you're weary from the fight Don't let your trouble steal your life So come a little closer, let me relieve ya Whoa. Come closer now, come closer now Yes, and come a little closer come now Come closer now, come closer now Oh, na, 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 na Come closer now now. Oh, come a little closer now. Come closer now. Come closer now. Oh, oh, oh. Come closer now. Come closer now. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah, I want 
Searching in the dark, yeah, you've been stumbling through your heart. Oh, na 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 na. Lately, you've been losing sleep, trying to make them all believe. I used to be a very excellent lacrosse goalie <laughs> before I went and pursued music in college and whatnot. Really? So, I yeah. Didn't know that. I didn't oh, know yeah. That. <laughs> yeah, see, they don't know that. Lacrosse Look. goalie? Wow. Yeah, I was good. I used to know like Tom Merichak and all the good lacrosse professionals back in the day. We know, we have no idea who I you're know, talking about. I know, you're soccer about. players. Yeah. It's cool. Football. Football. It's cool. <laughs> okay. Um, well, I can't use the soccer thing because everyone knows we play soccer. That's all over the place. But um, uh, I think one of the things that I, I guess I used to be a huge nerd. I was in all the, the gifted classes like, you know, AP and, and you know, all those, those special student classes that you had to test into. So I was, I was a, a huge dork. He's, he was the type where he didn't have to study and, <laughs> and still get like straight A's. So <laughs> we were all mad at him. Yeah. I really like Star Wars. <laughs> there you go. I'm a big I mean, nerd. Everyone knows that. They know Simone, but uh, I guess I don't know. I'm uh, I study physics in school currently, college. Yeah, at uh, Rutgers University. You know, uh, I like I, really long. I'm into long walks. I'm learning a lot about everyone. Yeah, um, I grew up in church. Some, some people don't know that. <laughs> yeah, um, that's about it. I love reptiles. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. So one thing people don't know about me is I'm actually blind in my right eye. So I used to wear a patch when I was like, <laughs> I used to wear a patch on my left eye so I could see out of my right eye and wear glasses. So when I'm in kindergarten, I have a picture of me cheesing with this patch on my eye, you know, and I used to get made fun of all the time, get into fights for it. But, uh, it, they said it'll never get better, so I stopped wearing glasses, stopped wearing patches. This this was the logic back in <laughs> in the eighties. Okay, he keeps blind out of his eye, so let's put a patch over his good eye and glasses on him, so that his his bad eye will strengthen. Yeah, yeah, somehow right. that's gonna. So work. most people don't know about that. I don't go all around talking was, about. All I did was humiliate right him. <laughs> Steven, uh, mine's pretty embarrassing. Uh, something that a lot of people don't know about me is I was jumped by my entire fourth grade male class. What? Uh, and I think it had something to do. This is getting dark. Yeah. Something that to do with my horrible. last name or something. Doesn't make sense. But the horrible. reason why I tell that story is because uh, knowing humility that young of an age has been able to inspire me to be standing up here with these fine gentlemen. See, I love how you just turn. I don't know around. how that connects, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. It think does. about it. You'll think about. I'm it. trying to get it in, in my in my brain. It makes sense. <laughs> in my brain. I got beat up by a whole bunch of twelve year olds, and I'm stronger for it. <laughs> yeah. <okay. laughs> yeah. I drifted away. Far from the place we started Tossed by the waves Further and further from your heart And I don't know how to 
looking back For if it was ever there at all It's all my fault Cause I got lost And now I'm Night falls and the stars come out in the dark just to guide me through. And they're taking me back to your arms, to the place where I know I belong. I'm not gonna stop till I finally find my way home again. Take me home. Risking it all to tear down the wall. I'm built up all around myself, and I'm willing to pay for every mistake to try to find the peace of mind I used to know so well. And I won't ever go back. I should have never left that all. It's all my fault, cause I got lost. That's why I'm playing the call When I look into the sky and the sunlight that shining reminds me of you Then the night falls and the stars come out in the dark just to guide me through And they're taking me back to your arms, to the place Gonna stop till I finally find my way home again. Take me home again. Take me home. Summer. Take me back.
People of York and Adams Counties, <laughs> we we will be we will be performing at Strand Capital Performing Arts Center on August second with the legendary Freddie Jackson, who I mean it's a pleasure to work with, and also one of our family members and good friends, T. Shaw who puts on a great show, so make sure you come out. It's gonna be an awesome show. You're gonna have a great time. It's gonna be a, a totally different style of music in every set, so just come out and enjoy yourselves. Thank you, everybody. We are so glad that we had you with us here on the corner of Culture and Maine, York's weekly cultural showcase. We'll be back again next week with more great artist profiles, behind the scenes footage, and visits out into the community of York and Adams County, seeing what's going on with the art scenes of poetry, music, dance, and theater. But in the meantime, please make sure you catch up on all our back episodes. Check us out on YouTube at White Rose Community TV. Check us out on Facebook, on Twitter. Send us your emails at cultureinmaine at gmail.com or visit us at wrct.tv. We want to hear your videos. We want to hear your opinions, your suggestions, and your show ideas. But mostly, we want to help entertain you and show you what a great community you are a part of. We're really glad that you chose to let us into your home. And we're really excited to bring you more fabulous art next week. Thanks a lot, and we'll see you again soon on the corner of Culture and Maine. Put my trust in the dead when I was young. Put my trust in the dead when I was young. We're playing at John Wright on uh, July 26th from 6 to 9. So it's a you know low-key show, but it's, it's a lot of fun, so we'll be there. Um, Really looking forward to Equality Fest Quality on uh, Fest. August 3rd. <laughs> so we'll be there. Um, we are, uh, tentatively, we haven't announced the album release party yet, but that will happen once things get a little more solid here than over the next couple weeks. Um, we're doing uh, actually a tour in October. We're going down through West Virginia to uh, the Purple Fiddle and down to Alabama. Alabama to uh, do a house concert down there. So we're trying to actually, you know, scoot into, actually we're going to go through Nashville, mm -hmm. uh, play there, um, and then hopefully in Atlanta or Decatur somewhere. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's a necessity. It, it's 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 a necessity. Yes. <laughs>